Next, I'm gonna show you how to use the pins tool, but more specifically, how to search for pins by keyword. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the pins tab here, the tool, and then go to search, you see right here, and then you wanna enter in whatever search term you wanna do, and you have a couple options here. You can select how many pins you wanna return. So let's just stick with 50. And then you want to select whether you wanna search in all pins or just videos. Now personally, I find that videos tend to get more um, reactions, so like likes and comments and repins and saves and all that kind of stuff. Usually videos do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select videos for now in this video. And then we're gonna go ahead and select or enter in a keyword. So let's say for example, we just type in, like if you're into the dog niche, and all we gotta do is go ahead and slip search. But before we do, I do wanna say that if you click the settings up here, and download downloading threads, you do have the option to select how many download threads you wanna do at the same time. So basically, when I click search, it's a two-part search. It goes to Pinterest, it grabs the pin IDs, and then after that, it starts extracting data for each individual pin. And there's a tremendous amount of data that I collect in the software. In fact, over 45 different data points. So it's quite incredible. So it does take a bit of time to do that. So I put in these downloading threads to make it a lot faster. And you can uh, download up to 15 products at a time, sorry, 15 pins at a time. But I, um, would, I always like keeping it around five. Five to 10 is usually pretty good. But if you have a really fast internet connection, maybe you'd like to go a little higher. But I'll just keep it at five for now. Now before we click search here, I do wanna say that the data coming from Pinterest is actually data from when you're not logged in to your account. So you, as you already know, if you're on Pinterest and if you're um, you know clicking through on things and looking at videos, looking at pins, Pinterest kinda of keeps track of what things you like looking at and then they tend to show those related pins in your feed all the time. So that's not happening here. So what's happening is we're getting data as if you're not logged into your own account. Now I do have the ability to scrape your feed in the browse and scrape technology here. And we'll talk about that in a different video. But for purposes of this video, we're actually getting data from Pinterest when you're not logged in. So let me just show you for example here. If you go to Pinterest, if I go to pinterest.com, or for me it's .ca, um, you'll see it tells you, you gotta log in, right? But you can actually go to pinterest.com forward slash, um, how is it now if I just go back, search, slash pins and then do question mark Q equals equals whatever search term you want and you can actually search Pinterest. This is the kind of a sneaky way of getting in there without logging in. You can just go like that. But you see all this kind of data that's being returned. That's kind of like what the software is doing. So just so you know that the data coming here is not like the customized feed data that you see when you log into your Pinterest account. It's just what Pinterest is returning. So let's go ahead and click search. And so like I said, there's two parts here. So it's gonna go ahead and first grab all the IDs. And now it's gonna extract the data and you can see the five downloaders rocking through that real quick. So you can see the progress at the bottom here. And as it's extracting, you can't click anything until it's done. If you wanna stop the extraction, you gotta click the stop button there. But now it's all done. So now that we can see all the data, and you can see there's a lot. Now sometimes you don't get all of the data, we just get the data that Pinterest returns from their system. So we could see that all of these don't have any promoters, meaning they're not ads. So we can come all the way through here and we can start to analyze some of the data based on your research. Now one awesome feature are the images are always automatically integrated into the grid. So this is something um, I've been working on over the years, I finally got it figured out. So down at the bottom, you'll see this little track bar. You can actually move that track bar up and you can see those images a little bit better. And they're all square images, so they're not full images. They're just the square images provided by Pinterest. They have a special square image format of the main image. So if you actually click on here and go to the pin, you may see the pin is, obviously it's a video because we search videos, but here's just a still image sort of thumbnail of the actual video. Now, one thing I've done up here is you can click this, you can wrap the lines in the cells if you'd like, so you could see them a little bit better when you're kind of messing around with the size. So let's say you wanted to see all the text in there. But if you go too far down, you see the text will kind of not really fit in there. 
Um, then you can just take the wrap off. But if you'd like to, it's just a convenience thing when you're kind of browsing, if you want to do something like this and see more data. So now we can go ahead and sort by the number of saves. So I'll bring this back down by the saves, repins, comments. I'll explain some of the data we're getting here. Now we have a whole bunch of reactions for each one. So with the saves and repins, those are really important datas. How many times someone has saved it? How many times someone has repinned? So very important data. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we go into the number of comments. That's obviously another important metric because uh, if people went through the um, procedure, of the effort of actually putting a comment in there, that means those are very popular pins. Um, the amount of times people have removed the actual pin from um, their board or whatever. So that's what that means. Now you get into the reactions. There are one, two, three, four, five different reactions that people can do on pins. So great idea, I love it, thanks, wow, I'm laughing. Kind of similar things they do on Facebook and whatnot. They can do that on Pinterest. And then over here, I just simply add up all those numbers for the total reactions. So you can just quickly sort here and you see that this one has the total, the most total reactions. It turns out it has a lot of saves and repins and now we can go ahead and see that one directly. But you see it's a dog watching a video of another dog cartoon or <laughs> Tom and Jerry looks like it. That's kind of funny. Anyhow. So that's the reactions. Then you come down here and we can get the description, the category, hashtags that are involved. So this is nice. You can now see uh, for the top um, repinned one you can go there and you can to select one you just you can double click any cell and it'll actually select the row so you can quickly see and go down here now we can see all the hashtags that this particular pin use so now you can use those types of hashtags in your marketing then we got some other stuff like the link to the um, each pin sometimes has a link, an external link out to the internet somewhere, and that's what this column is. So this one is actually linked to a YouTube video. These ones are linked to uh, uh, other websites. And sometimes you'll have this where it's not, a link is not given. That's just, just uploaded by the user. So there's, it's not really being promoted. Uh, they're not promoting a, a website or a link or anything. They're just uploading an image to Pinterest. Is it repin? Is it promoted? Is it a video? Then you've got all the video stuff. So you got the video link, video length, thumbnail image, the pinner image. So then here you've got a whole bunch of more data. You got the pinner data. So the username, location, how many followers does the pinner have, the board that it's on, the board link, board category, board image. Then you get into the creator and then as well as the promoter. So there's promoter, creator, and pinner. Sometimes they can be all different. Sometimes they can be all the same. Sometimes Pinterest doesn't provide all the data, but I wanted to provide as much data as possible for every pin in here. So you have everything you need to figure out which pins that you can look at. And I mean, if you go to Pinterest and start looking on Pinterest, you're not gonna find hardly any of this data. So I've been able to figure out how to extract this data from Pinterest and it's pretty exciting, especially for everyone using the software. You get to get access to this hidden data that Pinterest doesn't provide on their website, so it's, it's pretty wicked. Well, they do provide it, but it's just sort of in their source code type of thing. But they don't make it visually appealing on their site. So now it's basically another way to look at this data. So let me show you another thing you can do to look at this data instead of looking at it just inside of this graph. In the File button, you'll see you have an option here for Preview. Now you can also get access to the preview by just right clicking the data in the grid. So anywhere, just right click, preview. You got two preview options. You can preview in a table or preview in a feed. So let's start with a table. So with the table, it's basically kind of like what we we're just looking at in the software. But if you hover over the image, you do see a bigger image and you can see all the data here. Then you can do the sorting just like before and you can even um, search in here too in real time. It'll automatically just sort, or sorry, search through the titles for you and all the data, the text data that's contained in there. 
So that's a handy little report. And what's cool is you can actually save this report to your computer and then deliver this report to clients. Let's say you do research for your clients about products, about, sorry, pins on Pinterest. You can just deliver this report. It's an HTML file. You can deliver this file just like any other file. So like delivering a file like a text file or like a, a Word document or a PDF, anything like that. You can deliver an HTML file the exact same way, you know, as an attachment to an email, throw it in a zip file, whatever you want. So when people get this file and double click it on their computer, it'll look just like this. It'll just open up in their default web browser. And to save that as a file is very easy. Just under File, Export, and you can export the interactive HTML table file and just save it to your computer. So if I want to save it, just go like that, and there's the file, and now it's saved. If you want to go and look at it, Click on last working folder, and there it is. If we just double click it, like I said, it just opens up in your browser. And you can just deliver this file like any other file. Now let's look at the other formats. We go right click, preview, and go feed. So now we have a feed format. So now it's kind of like being on Pinterest where you have these little pins, but I add more data in here. So now we can see the saves, repins, comments, reactions, followers, removes, and if it's a video or not, it's down here. And what's cool is you can sort them. So original order, saves, repins, comments, reactions, pinner, followers, removes. So it's just another way to look at the data. And you can also search up here. So as you type, it will uh, filter everything and it actually also highlights. So that's pretty cool. It tells you how many it returns up at the top here, so it's 50, and if you type in dog, you see it goes down to 30. So that's another handy report, and just like the other report, you can actually deliver this as a file exactly the same way. File, export, the feed, and now we have access to that feed report that we can do whatever we want with. So that's basically how you can search pins by keyword using the search tool.